This is Zuhra Hodzic, a former resistance fighter in the war in Bosnia. She now lives in a comfortable flat in Bern, where she prepares lunch for her teenage daughter. Twenty years ago, things were quite different. It was the beginning of the war in Bosnia, her home. Zuhra was living in the village of Pali, just outside Srebrenica, when Serb forces swiftly advanced on the area. Serbian soldiers marched into my village. They used loudspeakers and ordered us to leave our homes and gather together on the square and said that nothing would happen to us. Instead, my brother and I fled towards the place where the Serb soldiers had struck first and from the shelter of the forest, we watched the first people being shot in the playground. Zuhra and her brother hid in the forest for two weeks. As she had had some military training, she helped to set up a resistance group under the leadership of Nasa Oric, a police chief turned army commander. For many months, she was the only woman fighter in the fledgling army. Thanks to their efforts, Srebrenica was the only town in the area that managed to hold off the Serbs. Her house became a refuge for Muslims, driven from their homes in surrounding villages. My house was very big, two floors. We had 70 refugees staying there, sleeping all over the floors. In 1993, Srebrenica was declared a safe area under the Protectorate of the United Nations. But the town near the Serb border was cut off and hardly any food aid reached them. These pictures show one of the few aid convoys that made it through to the town. It was a terrible time, but the worst part was when we had to leave on the 11th of July 1995. In the night we were told by UN troops that the Serbs were coming, that everyone would have to get out and go to Tuzla. The problem was we couldn't communicate with the Dutch and Canadians. But we did understand that it was terrible for them, because they couldn't protect us. Many of the soldiers were crying as they sent us away. As the deportation of the women began, Serb General Mladic arrived in Srebrenica, accompanied by journalists. He told the people, don't be afraid, nobody will harm you. That evening, the systematic murder of the Bosnian men left in Srebrenica began. Zuhra, her husband and other family members fled on foot with just the clothes on their backs. The Serbs were in hot pursuit, firing weapons from tanks. We all met up on a hill. There were about 15 to 20,000 people there who didn't know where to turn. People were frantically looking for their loved ones in the huge crowd and there were explosions everywhere. Everyone was crying. It was a desperate situation. People then started heading in different directions. We were being shot down as we went. At the next meeting point there were only 4,000 people. I met up with my family members again and we agreed that if one of us were hit the others would simply carry on. It was every man for himself. After five days of walking with no food, Zuhra finally met up with her family again in Tuzla where she stayed in a sports hall. Later, they took refuge in a friend's home in an empty Serb village. But when the residents started returning home, it was no longer safe for her to stay, and she fled to Switzerland with her daughter. She was afraid of what the Serbs might do to her. In 2001, Zuhra arrived at the prison-like asylum reception centre in Valorb, western Switzerland. Everything was locked and fenced off, it felt like a prison. I thought those people who had helped me to come here had set a trap and really wanted to lock me up. 
but Zuchra was soon moved to a family-friendly refugee centre and eventually found an apartment in Bern. Depression and headaches stopped Zuchra from holding down a proper job, but she was allowed to work as a cleaner for pocket money for Bern's Integration Centre for Asylum Seekers. Zuchra still receives counselling at the Red Cross's clinic for victims of torture and war. I will never forget Srebrenica. Nobody will ever forget, not just me. Mm.